And welcome to Local Edition on Time Warner Cable. I'm Steve Swatt with the Sacramento Report. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the demise of enterprise zones in California and what that means for businesses in the state, at least some of those businesses. My guest this segment is Marie Waldron, who's a member of the State Assembly from Escondido. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. And I know you were involved in uh, some of the discussions and negotiations that finally ended up changing our law. And let's, let's talk about the old system. Back in the 1980s, we started okay. what was called en enterprise zones in some communities designed to... Uh, incentivize businesses to hire from within some of the poorer communities mm -hmm. but it really a lot of people didn't think it worked out very well right um, enterprise zones are areas that were designated in uh, economically stressed areas by the state to offer tax incentives for businesses to bring jobs to the areas however we found that there were many problems with them and some of the things included they weren't generating enough of the jobs that we wanted to see, as well as uh, we found that strip clubs were, were qualifying for tax ex ex exemptions from the state, as well as uh, bigger franchises like fast food restaurants. And these were more uh, designated for the homegrown type of businesses, family businesses, or the types of businesses that were part of the California landscape. So when we saw that, the tax exemptions were going for other types of uses that wasn't really working. Um, the governor had been wanting to dismantle them, so we knew that that was happening. So the question for the legislature was, how can we continue offering incentives for business while we dismantle enterprise zones on the other side? And, and one of the problems with the enterprise zones, I mean, I understand you had some companies that would lay off people in, you know, in maybe one part of their business and then hire others and try to claim these benefits for the hiring, mm -hmm. right? So, so the, go the governor did push for getting rid of the enterprise zones. Now, the Republicans pushed, generally, Republicans pushed back and they like mm -hmm. enterprise zones, right? right? Uh -huh. And, you know, throughout the state, enterprise zones were located in various um, assembly members' districts. Mm -hmm. So not all of them were on board with dismantling it and trying to offer a different solution. Um, but in the end, we came together on what what needed to happen, knowing that the governor would be dismantling enterprise zones. You know, we had to come up with an alternative. AB 93 was not really the best solution. That bill dismantled the enterprise zones, offered some incentives like a, a sales tax exemption for manufacturing and research and development, but it only went for four and a half years, which really isn't that much of an incentive. Um, but the sister bill to that, SB 90, added all the good things that AB 93 lacked. Um, the biggest incentive is a statewide eight-year sales tax exemption for equipment purchases, both by the manufacturing industry as well as research and development, which would then include the life science industry, which had been left out of the enterprise zones. It also included other things like new hiring tax credits, um, other incentives. It also helped the existing um, enterprise zones as they dismantle them so it wasn't just a direct cutoff. Um, the equipment co could cost tens of thousands up to millions of dollars. So for the life science industry who's looking to expand, that's a very big incentive for them. Um, and it really helps them to stay in California instead of going to Arizona or other states. Um, we're, we're estimating about a $700 million amount of money that's saved by businesses that can be used, you know. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. It's a fascinating subject, but uh, Marie Waldron, thanks for coming by Thank and you. talking about it. We appreciate it, and thanks to our viewers for watching Local Edition on Time Warner Cable. We'll see you next time.